because it's daylight and there's light behind it. Do, it's do you sad that, that you have to explain. Well, now, what do you mean light behind it? Ups. I mean, wherever the moon is, whatever is above it or behind it or beyond it, there is light back there. Uh, light that is not being scattered in our direction? Yes. Do, so you guys think the blue of sky is a in 3D front of the moon? Space. Yeah, no, it I don't. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. I don't <laughs> think. No, no, no. I don't think the blue sky is in front of the moon. I know the blue wow. sky is in front of the moon because okay. because That's... evidence that other flat earthers ha- have given me, and also evidence that you can verify for yourself, will confirm that. Oh, that's that's a whole number. Let, let me if, if, if if you want if you want to go ahead and confirm this for for yourself, get yourself a spot GPS tracker, get yourself a cheap camera and a weather balloon that you can get for sixty dollars on weatherballoon.com. Launch a camera up around twenty kilometers and see for yourself. You will see that all the supposed blue in the sky will actually be below the camera once it hits TOTD. You know the bottom line is I want to mention this again when you look at the sun. And you see a full moon, you know, the whole thing is, is illuminated, you know, at the same rate from the edges to where towards the center. It should disperse as you go towards the edges. It doesn't. You know, this, the, the moon's a mystery. The sun's a mystery. For example, I want to get back to the sun. Not really a mystery. Quick. To you, it may be. I want to get back to the sun here real quick. You know, the sun is supposedly hydrogen and helium. Okay. Well, you have a scientist at the University of Missouri who says no. You know, it's just so it's illuminates. These claims are mostly eclipse. made of iron. C- citation oh. needed, please. Okay. Yeah. Iron actually yeah. kills stars. Yeah, yeah wait, wait, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm trying to, I'm trying to answer the I question. Would, I, would, I would like to point something out first. There are people in academics, in academics, in academia, who are wrong. Yeah, and, and let, let Curtis explain this because he's a nuke too. So he'll explain this to you because there is iron in the sun, but iron tends to kill stars because it's not f- fusionable. Um, it's it's very bad for stars, actually. It causes them to die. But, uh, Curtis, you want to, like, expand upon that for him? Great. Um, but... Wait, do we, do we care about this? Oh, I'm, sorry, Curtis, Craig. I'm sorry, Craig. Yeah, we, 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 we do care. Like, Who cares? Like, we, what we, can tell, we know that the, the sun is mostly hydrogen and helium because we can tell the um, remnants of the fusion that are coming off of it, the gamma rays, the, the you know, all the different... Um, things that are coming after the, the fusion has happened, what's it, we, we, we can measure the wavelengths of everything that's there, and it conforms to what we would expect from, huge, uh, from fusion, from turning hydrogen into helium. You know, we, we can measure what, what happens after that, and from that, figure out what the fusion was. So we do know, it's not an okay. assumption that it's hydrogen and helium, we do oh, know. Yeah, the, pro- Russian is, the proton-proton cycle produces a very specific type of neutrinos. These neutrinos for the longest time weren't discovered. They couldn't figure out how to actually come yeah, up with a way to discover them because they don't others. really interact very much. But as of, I think it was a 2017 paper, um, they have actually discovered these neutrinos. They know that these neutrinos are the exact same energy levels, what we would expect from the predictive models from proton-proton reactions, which is converting hydrogen into helium. So this is an example of, of a model. They said, we know this has to be this way. What is it we're supposed to be looking for? Let's look for this. And guess what? Eventually, they found it. It took them a while, but they did find it. So what he's saying is exactly right. We're using evidence by which we've acquired based upon the model to have a confirmation of what it is. And we can also look at hydrogen and helium spectral lines. Anybody who knows anything about basic basic physics can understand spectrometry. You, and, and, so, okay. um, yes. I want to mention this, though, Steve. You guys want a citation? It's, again, you could look it up. It's Science Daily, you know, and this is from a, a, a scientist here at the uh, Missouri, uh, University of Missouri. His name is Oliver Manuel. And again, he says, you know, it's assumed that the sun is hydrogen and helium. So everything no, you're saying... Not, no, it's, no, it's we not. Just we just showed you that it's not. I understand that. But this is a scientist who's saying it from. Well, this is a scientist that you may misunderstand, or he needs to come on and explain it. I don't. I'm not arguing with him. I'm telling you as a fact. I I don't care if a scientist tells you that Steve that the that the Earth is flat. They're wrong. Even scientists can't agree on this. It's they do agree. Theoretical. It's supposedly 93 million miles away. They do agree. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, Yeah, they're right. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, Steve. Yeah, Steve. Um. And I actually went ahead and found the name of that scientist before, and what uh, Russian Vids is failing to point out in the link to his own article is that his assertion has not been accepted into the scientific literature, so therefore it is quackery until further notice. And well, guess what? On, and on, guess Red. what? And guess what? 
regardless what the sun is made of, that is a different question of how far away the sun is, which has okay. been known since the time of Kepler. Yeah, and I got okay. si- I got scientists. Let, let, I, I've listened let's to, let's to that. Let, let's let Russian Vince respond to that. Go ahead, Russian Vince. Yeah, I want to mention this. Uh, I'm glad you were getting on. Uh, this is a good segue to what I want to mention. I live in the San Francisco area. Okay, it never, okay. never snows. Hold on. It never snows where I'm located. But just a few hundred miles away, it, it pours snows, you know. And so from a sun that's supposedly 90 million miles away, this minute difference in miles from where I live, where it never snows to where it does snow, it's amazing a sun 93 million miles away, it's you not know. not 93 million miles away. It's yeah, obviously it's not. It, it's, 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 it's actually, it actually is 93 million right. miles away, and Dude, that's demonstrable. Why, why, did, why didn't the Masons just pick a more reasonable number, man? That is madness. They, they, they because it had nothing Because it had to do with now. physics. Hang, you can't on, just hang change on, reality. Because science, hang on. Because scientists know, dude, that if they just make shit up, that, they, that other people will call them out because it right. can be verified or disproven. And guess what? Whenever you actually go ahead and do this observation and do the measurements, you find out to be completely true. True that the value given by the nameless, faceless they actually comports with reality. And if you want to see how you can demonstrate yourself, go to my video, Jernism uh, versus the Sun, or Jernism <laughs> and the Size of the Sun, and look and follow the step by step process of how to measure the distance from Earth to the Sun. And then at that point, once you see that video, you, sir, can no longer claim ignorance. Otherwise, you will be breaking in the ninth command. And I want to. And I want to point something out that you said earlier. <laughs> the mind of God. You said something earlier, and this is needs to be brought out. We're giving you scientific explanations that actually can be used. These are explanations that people used for for hundreds of years, and and they can be modeled. The difference is that we come up with a scientific explanation that actually works. When we asked you for something like, okay, why is the moon self illuminating? Your answer was, well, God's. You know, God sustains this. God's power. That's not science at that point. You do recognize that is not science, right? Because science has to hear. Let me finish. Science has to hear by methodological naturalism, right? So if you're you're saying that you're positing some kind of thing that requires God, you're no longer in science. You're done. Research is it, oh, research I, I, is not it, research is not the flat earth or strong suit. So I put the link of the video that I'm referring to in the live chat and also internally, so it can be easy to find. Was this the a scientist guy that he's referring to? Uh, no, no. This is this is the methodology and a clear point demonstration on how one would measure the distance to the sun, gotcha. as well as its size. But oh, Red's ninety three million. Yeah. yeah. Yes, ninety-three million we, or one hundred fifty million kilometers. By the way, by the, just, by the way, we just sent a Parker probe there. Not and, even on that. Wait, let me finish. The Parker probe um, just yeah, reached the sun yeah, not too long ago. The, pro- wow. pro- the, the Parker probe. Listen, guys, I, I want to mention well, this. God well, damn it, Russian on, vids! On, if you interrupt not, me not, one not more time, yet, not done yet. I okay, cannot talk loud, so I don't want to have to talk over you. So please do not interrupt me anymore. Okay, I have to. It's late. I cannot talk loud. So the you're breaking up, Steve. I'm sorry, you're breaking up a lot. I you only hear you part of the time. Well, everybody else seems to be hearing me fine. Yeah, I hear me. Ask them. The Parker probe just reached the sun as the closest man-made object ever to go to the sun. It's, if I think, about 30, 20 to 30-something million miles away right now. Um, and it's supposed to get much closer. Um, it's going to be to the point where it's like pretty much skimming the damn surface for all practical purposes. It's like 3 million miles away or some crap like that. Um, in yeah. order to get it there, guess what? We had to know that how how, the, how far the way the sun was. So we have real world information that is being streamed to us in real time from an object that is damn near close to 70 million miles away from us that we've put there that is going towards the sun. So yes, we have overwhelming confirmational evidence of the distance of the sun. As Roy said, we can't make this shit up. Re- uh, scientists don't make this up. We don't make up numbers to conform with reality. Reality tells up us what the numbers should be. Yeah, and also to to confirm to confirm something to you. Um, I would also like for you to see the video about the ISS transit. Now, uh, mind of God, remember how I told you how I was able to measure the uh, the altitude of the ISS using the uh, parallax method? Parallax. That's a new thing, but yeah, I'll look at that. But keep going. Yes. Okay. Yes. That same that same methodology can be applied to objects going in front of the sun. And guess what? We did that with Venus, and we've done that with Mercury. With Mercury going in front of the sun, we were able to measure it to be about 48 million miles away. Now, if Mercury is in front of the sun and Mercury is confirmed to be 48 million miles away using, oh, I don't know, geometry, I'm sorry, trigonometry, then that would mean that the notion that the sun is millions and millions and millions of miles away is not absurd, but verified, correct? 
but you guys just from a from a model perspective right where you what you guys what a model does it's essentially taking observations and doing some kind of like curve fitting or you know you're putting something smooth through something finite right do, do you agree with that no not necessarily no a, mo- no a model is something that we use to make predictions and if those predictions turn out to actually happen in reality then our model reflects reality right. that is the purpose of a model right true true but your your model is not discrete you're you're able to then use it to predict in a continuous way correct like we, we, we can accuracy we we can use our model to predict uh, objects in the future continuously because our model is just so good. Because as you said, it's not discrete; yeah. it's in your face. But that's yeah, not what. Okay, oh, hang on. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Time out. He's he's talking. You guys are. This is the equivocation problem. When he's talking about contiguous and discrete, he's talking about signal processing. He's talking about signal being a discrete signal or a contiguous signal. No, no, we're we're good. The, I okay, don't wanna, because it's completely I, I, no, different from what no, you're no, using it for. They, they got it. I, I, okay. I just wanted to confirm that. That, okay, this, so this, my point about the, yeah, the model the is, 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 is yeah. your uniqueness. It, it, hang, it, hang on, my, yeah. might have got us talking. Then I want to reply. Yeah, there, there's a in math, you like the, the concept of a unique solution and all that. That's the part I think maybe Jaron was trying to express, and not to bring up the past, but in his um, in his debate, that's the part you guys have to be more sensitive to, especially to math people. You know, like we we know what we understand what you're saying in terms of observations being put into a model and then being having predictive capabilities. We understand that. Now we're talking about uniqueness of that model. And, and are there other ones that would, you know, produce results that are also correct? That's, no. that's the issue. Where, no. where is, where is the non uniqueness um, rigorously shown? That's, that's my concern. Here's, here's my, here's my thing. When you're, when you're bringing up, unique and predictive capabilities and stuff like that um you also brought up somewhere in the middle of that we understand what you're talking about because we know math yeah, and i appreciate that of, of algebraic equations right every new observation is kind of a new sort of constraint that you're adding correct no no no, no. listen model. listen the thing is that you can make a really small model with cones to confirm that the equations that we give you will reflect reality. So, for example, if I make a triangle with cones at a random distance, I just I, I close my eyes and I put cones in a rough triangle and I try to use parallax or, you know, the law of perspective, mind you to try to figure out where the edge or the tip of that cone would be, and I measure it, and it turns out to match my equations, that means that these these equations with these inputs reflect reality. If I then use those same equations, which have already been confirmed to work using astronomical observations, like, for example, transits of Venus or Mercury to see that they're millions and millions of miles away, how am I just making shit up, and how is this so hard to grasp? How is this so hard to accept? So I never went to that extreme that you're making stuff up. I was just saying uh, just maybe it's worth it to be sensitive to the fact that there are potentially multiple solutions to this model, which is kind but of... there aren't multiple solutions. If there was multiple solutions, then another one would be available, and it's not. Okay, okay. so Craig, you decided to, to say that statement. You show me the, the equations that you're using for this model and show me that, because you, you decided to make... The, the equations statement. for what model? The actual model that the we model use? That you're, the model that we're here, here discussing. I mean, I gave you three of them already. Well, Do you want no, to hear them? I mean, no, he, I, decided, I, I, he decided to speak up and, and make that statement, so I, I'm going to expect something from well, him. Well, hang on. I got, I, no, wait a minute here. Uh, with all due respect, we've be, we've all given formulas and we've all given an explanation of the models. I have yet, and everybody in here has have yet, to ever see a flat earther given with any model. Like any. Like, yeah, we're, like we're, any. We're, we're, that was my point. It's coming. It's, it's, because I've heard, I've heard, I've heard that for how years. long? Time out. Time out. Where, when did the time limit start, man? We've been, we've been brainwashed. Time out. Time out. That no, is a you bullshit been argument. Until you started thinking about flat Earth, that's when you started getting brainwashed. When so we've, we've literally been brainwashed our whole. Time. When, yes, when, the, you think when about the flat, flat Earth, then you have been brainwashed. Jared, right? go ahead. Jared. When, when the wait, flat, wait, when the flat Earthers. Hear... Jared, when, go for when... a second. Oh, okay. Jerry was trying to say oh, something. Sorry, sorry. Thinking. That that whole argument of oh, you guys have had this amount of time. We've only had these handful of years is a bullshit argument in the first place. And please Why? stop. Why? Why, is that? Why? Because going by the Bible, you've had the flat earth explanation for all of eternity. So uh, fucking uh, stop it right now. Mind of mind. Russian, Russian, Russian. Hang on. Hang on. Mind, mind yeah, of God. God. I have, I, I have a, uh, a solution. To this is that 
Um, a flat earther once said to me three years ago, you are simply taking the globe for granted. 